In this video, we're going to take a look at combining transformations. So to begin with here, let's recap the transformations that you should be familiar with. Starting off then, we've got two translations here. So for the top translation, this represents a horizontal translation by the vector minus a zero. And then for the translation underneath, this represents a vertical translation by the vector zero a. Then we have two reflections. I've got f of minus x, which reflects f of x in the y axis. And then we've also got minus f of x here, which reflects f of x in the x axis. And then finally, we've got two stretches here. So I've got f of ax, which is a stretch parallel to the y axis with scale factor 1 over a. And then we've got a f of x, which is a stretch parallel to the x axis with scale factor a. So the question here then that we're particularly concerned about is what about a combination of transformations and does the order of that combination matter? So let's take a curve then. Let's say y equals f of x. And then we apply a combination of transformations. So here, what have I got? Well, what I've got here is a horizontal translation. That's of this form here for my first bullet point. Now I've got this minus two here outside the bracket. So this is a vertical translation. Okay, it follows this form here for the second bullet point. So this affects the x-coordinates, this horizontal translation. And then this minus two here, this is a vertical translation, so that affects the y-coordinates. So here, the order does not matter, okay? So for this first example, the order does not matter. So order does not matter. And the reason for this then, is because this affects the x-coordinates, this affects the y-coordinates. It wouldn't matter then if we applied, say, this horizontal translation first and then the vertical translation or vice versa. Okay, so in that case, the order does not matter, so that's fine. So what about then, again, we have y equals f of x. And then we've got this combination of transformations here. So I've got y equals f of x and that maps to y equals 3 f of x plus 1. Again, does the order matter? Well, in this case now, the order does matter. So here, the order does matter. So the order does matter. So here, what have we actually got? Well, I've got this stretch here. So that's of this form here. So this is a stretch parallel to the x-axis with scale factor A. We've got this plus one here. So this is a translation, a vertical translation of this form. So this affects the y-coordinates, this stretch here, and this vertical translation also affects the y-coordinates. So because they both affect the y-coordinates, the order now does matter. So how do we determine the correct order? Well, all we do here is we use bid mass. So we use bid mass. So we use bid mass then. Well, this is a stretch parallel to the x-axis x-axis with scale factor a. So this here, we multiply the y-coordinates by the scale factor here a. So that's multiplication, so that's m. So this must come first, so let's just highlight that. So this here comes first. And then this plus one here, that's addition, so that would come second. Okay, so that's the correct order. We apply the stretch first, then the translation. So let's just highlight that as well. So that comes second there. So that's in the scenario then when both the transformations affect the y coordinates. And then if we take a look at one more example here, again, we have y equals f of x and that maps to y equals f of 2x minus 1. So again, does the order matter here? Well, in this case, it does because both of these transformations here affect the x coordinates. So now everything's inside the bracket. So here it affects the x coordinates only. So again, the order does matter. So order does matter. So here we need to be slightly careful. We don't just use bid mass again. Here in this case, we use reverse bid mass. So now use reverse bid mass to determine the correct order. So use reverse bid mass. So what do we mean by reverse bid mass? Well, in this case then, Addition and subtraction would come first. That would be the first transformation. So in this case, then, this horizontal translation would come first. Let's just highlight that. 
we apply the translation first. And then division and multiplication would come second. So in that case, then this um, stretch here, that would come second. So we highlight that as well. Like we said, this comes second. Okay. So like you can see then, applying a combination of transformations isn't too challenging. You just need to be aware that the order does matter, generally speaking, like you can see here. And you also need to know how to determine the correct order then for the transformations. So that's everything that we need here for our introduction. So what I'm going to do now is take a look at one quick practice question combining transformations. If we just take a look then at this one practice question here, we've got the curve y equals f of x, which we're told has a maximum point a at minus 1, 1 and a minimum point B at 3, minus 4. And all I want to do here then is find the coordinates of A and B under the following transformations. So I've got three parts here, so I've got part A, part B, and part C. So let's begin with part A then. So what we actually have here for each part is a combination of transformations. So for part A then, we've got Y equals, so we've got F of X minus 1, plus 2. So here, what do we actually have? Well, I've got this horizontal translation here. This affects the x coordinates. And then we've got this plus two here. This is a vertical translation and that affects the y coordinates. So here, because one of the transformations affects the x coordinates, and then the other transformation here affects the y coordinates, it wouldn't matter what order we apply these transformations. So let's just work from left to right here. So if we apply this um, horizontal translation here first, so f of x minus one. So here, I'm going to add one to all of the x coordinates. So for A then, so that has coordinates of minus one, one. And then we have B, which has coordinates of three, minus four. Well, like we said then, we're simply going to add one to each x coordinate here. So for the point A, that would be zero for the x coordinate. And then for B here, Again, we just add one to the x coordinate here. So three plus one, that would be four. And then this vertical translation here, that tells us that we add two to each y coordinate. So one plus two is three. So we get zero three there for my new point here for A. And then for the new point for B, well, I've got minus four plus two, that gives us minus two there. Okay, and there we have it. So this is the new point for A then. That's A with a little dash there. So this would be the image then once we apply these transformations. So that's the image of A, this would be the image of B. Okay, so that's the solution to part A. Moving on to part B then. So now what we've got here is y equals 2 f of x minus 5. So again, if we just take a look here at the transformations, I've got this stretch here. So this stretch here affects the y coordinates. And then we've got this vertical translation here, which again affects the y coordinates. So here now, because both of these affect the y coordinates, the order now does matter. So here, because it affects the y coordinates, we just simply need to use bid mass. So use bid mass here. So if we use bid mass here, what that tells us then is we need to apply the stretch first. Okay, this is using multiplication here, and then we apply the minus five. So this comes first, and then do it in green. We apply this minus five here second. Okay, so we have the point A and the point B. So let's just write those down again. So A is minus one, one, and then we have B, which is three minus four. So let's start with the point A then. Well, here, the x coordinate won't change. We don't do anything to the x coordinate. So that will stay as minus 1. Now, for the y coordinate, like we said, we apply the stretch first. So this is with a scale factor of 2. So I times this y coordinate by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And then we apply this vertical translation here. So now we subtract 5 for the y coordinates. So 1 times 2 is 2. Then we minus 5, so 2 minus 5, and that gives us minus 3 there. So we get minus 1, minus 3. So that's for the image of A there. And then for the image of B here, what would we get? 
Well, again, the X coordinate won't change, so we don't do anything to the X coordinate, so that stays as it is. Then for the Y coordinate here, well, like we said, we applied a stretch first, so this is with a scale factor of 2. So minus 4 times 2, that would be minus 8. And then we subtract 5, so minus 8, minus 5, and that gives us minus 13 there. Okay, and there we have it, so that's the solution to part B. And then finally we've got part C here. So we've got y equals f of 3x minus 4. So what have we got here? Well, everything's now inside the bracket, so this affects the x coordinates only. We've got this um, stretch here with scale factor 1 over a, so this would be 1 over 3. And then we've got this horizontal translation here. So let's just write down the points again. So I've got a, which is minus 1. 1, and then we've got b, which is 3 minus 4. So what would these map to here? Well, for the image of a then, well here, we don't do anything to the y coordinate, so the y coordinate will remain as it is here. So that would be 1 there. Now for the x coordinate here, we need to determine the correct order. So here, because everything's inside the bracket, it only affects the x coordinate. So here, to determine the correct order, we need to use reverse bid mass. So here, use reverse bid mass to determine the correct order. So use reverse bid mass here then. So now, we just highlight the correct order then. Here, addition and subtraction would come first. So that means this translation here of minus 4, that would come first. Um, so we're going to add 4 here to each x coordinate, and then we apply the stretch. So that comes first, and then we apply the stretch. So let's work through that then. So our x coordinate here is minus 1. So now we apply this translation here. So what I'm going to do here then is add 4 to the x coordinate. So minus 1 plus 4 would give me 3. So I get 3 there, then we times that by this um, scale factor here of 1 over a, so we're going to times that by 1 over 3. So in that case then, I've got 3 times 1 over 3, and that will simply give me 1 there. So for the image of a, we get 1, um, 1 there. So now for the image of b, just following the same process then, my y coordinate won't change, we don't do anything to the y coordinate, so that's minus 4. So now for the x coordinate here, Again, we start by adding 4 here, so 3 plus 4 is 7, and then we times that by 1 over 3. So 7 times 1 over 3, and that gives us 7 over 3 there. Okay, so my x coordinate then is going to be 7 over 3. So 7 over 3 there, let me just rewrite that, it's a little bit unneat. Try again. So 7 over 3. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to C, and that gives the solution there to question one. And that actually brings the end of this video on combining transformations.